So in the last video, we finished off the graphs for gains from trade. In today's video, uh, we're going to start off with dynamic comparative advantage, and then we're going to get into economic coordination. So we're going to start off dynamic comparative advantage with two uh, definitions that you need to know. And this is learning by doing and dynamic comparative advantage. Learning by doing is pretty much where uh, we're repeating what we do in an activity. And because we're repeating what we're doing, we become more productive in that activity. And over time, as we get better and better in that activity, that will lower the opportunity cost of doing that activity over time. So that's learning by doing. Pretty much uh, you're doing it again and again. Repetitive experience makes you better and better. And that's lowering the opportunity cost of doing that activity. So for example, uh, if you ever worked at uh, McDonald's and you're producing burgers, you're making burgers, um, what you're, you're the burger boy, what you're doing is you're uh, rep repetitively making burgers and you probably get better and better at it. On the first day, it'll probably take you a couple hours to make a burger, but by the end of the week, you're probably uh, spouting out burgers uh, by the second. And that's because you got better and you lowered your opportunity cost of producing uh, burgers. Now, dynamic comparative advantage is a comparative advantage one has acquired by specializing in an activity and becoming the lowest cost producer as a result of learning by doing. So, short in short, pretty much you're, um, you're learning by doing, you're repetitively uh, doing the same thing, or in that in that sense, you're specializing in that activity, and because you're specializing, sooner or later, you're going to be the one who's going to produce uh, this certain good at the lowest cost, uh, making you the lowest cost producer because uh, because you've been you've went through all the trouble of um, of the trial and errors, and and you got you got better at it, and that will make you the lowest cost producer. That's dynamic comparative advantage. Now we're on to economic coordination. So pretty much uh, there are two competing economic coordination systems and there, 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 are, there were two. I don't know if they're still using the two, but they were central economic planning and that is communism. And this appears to be the best because it focuses on the national priorities, but two countries have already tried central economic planning and they failed. But I don't really remember which two countries they were. I think Russia was, or the Soviet Union was one of them, but I don't remember the other. So the second one would be decentralized coordination and to make decentralized coordination work, um, we need four complementary social social institutions that have evolved over many centuries and these four complementary social in, uh, social institutions are uh, one they are firms two they are markets three they are property rights property rights and four money thing we love the most and that's where i'll leave us off there in the next video we'll talk more about these four uh, social institutions uh but before that please comment rate and subscribe and i'll see you guys